Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop and part two of my 3D printer enclosure series. Last video, we went over the concrete base, uh, what worked, what didn't work, what could have been changed, etc. This week's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna go over the construction of everything above the concrete base. So the box, the door, the electronics, modifying the printer. There's gonna be quite a lot of content here. So let's get started. So first step is to drill the holes. So I made this little 3D printed tool here. Basically, it's a drill guide. So this will make sure that my drill bit goes in nice and straight. And it's made for half inch plywood. So I'll drill a hole directly in the middle of that. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by, you know, placing it on the rear panel here. This is the back panel. And I'm going to put one screw at each corner hold on the side panels. Alrighty, so some holes are drilled. I gotta assemble this. I went and got these screws here and they have a threadless shank of about half an inch. So that means that they'll thread into the plywood and they'll only grab the part that they're supposed to grab. I've already pre-drilled the holes. That should guide this whole assembly together. We should have a relatively clean square box. Now we've got our first side panel on. So now I'm going to go put on the second. So the next step is going to be to join the front section of the box on the top and bottom with two of these strips. So first I need to drill the holes here. I'm going to put two screws in each. bottom, now we get to do the top. plywood box. So now I got to put on the lid. Whew. It's got some weight. Unfortunately, the table saw guy messed it up. So my box isn't exactly 24 by 24. I can't really cut an eighth of an inch off on the table saw. So there's going to be a bit of overhang, but I'm going to leave that towards the back so that you won't really be able to see it. To get this to be square, it's gonna require a little bit of messing around. So this is our enclosure so far. Nice and big for a nice big 3D printer. So for this clip, my microphone wasn't working, so I'll just tell you here. When the door gets attached to the box, it's going to need to be airtight. This is going to keep in the hot air, i.e. the energy, as well as the fumes. I'll just be using a foam gasket from the homeless desk spot for this purpose. Attaching the foam gasket to the sides of the box is actually quite easy, as they have a frontal facing surface. However, no such surface exists on the top and bottom. To fix this, I will be attaching aluminum bar stock to the back of the top and bottom wood strips, and that will give me a place to install my foam gaskets. The bar stock is going to be secured to the strips via wafer head framing screws. They are really short and they won't poke through the plywood. Normally they are used in metal framing, but I find they work well for other applications as well. The idea is the plywood box here 
is going to be secured to this concrete slab from the sides by the use of some custom made brackets. And those brackets will secure to the concrete using these Tapcon concrete screws, specially designed for the purpose. So I need to drill in, uh, pre-drill these holes into the concrete. I need to drill a quarter inch extra. And for 3 16 Tapcon, I need a 5 30 second spit. So I took the liberty of manufacturing a few bits and bobs here. I need to put this softer foam gasket on the bottom. All right, so the foam gasket's installed and really that's gonna do two things for us. One, it's going to seal the bottom and make it airtight against the concrete. And of course, that's one of the main purposes of the enclosure is to keep the noxious fumes inside. And two, it's gonna account for any issues with um, surface flatness. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm going to preload the foam essentially by taking something heavy and placing it on the top of this box. And what that's gonna do is that's going to squish down this foam so that when I screw it in, these brackets will hold the box down and keep this foam squished so that it remains airtight. All right, that covers it. So I took the liberty of printing out this um, front panel here on my printer and it has holes for two switches one to control the lights and one to actually control the printer as well as a big cutout for a temperature controller and I'm going to place it just a hair above the edge of this front piece because I'm cutting it out in a U shape if I place it any lower than that there will be a gap visible so I'm just going to place it a little bit above and that will give me what I need. So, front panel is attached. So I can take my temperature control module and start pushing that through the hole. That's pretty well retained already, but it also came with these clips here, which have a ratcheting system and essentially compresses against the front panel like a spring. So yeah, anyways, that's the uh, heater module. These I measured more precisely, so they've got these side clips and they should just snap in pretty easily. One, and two. No issues at all, it's all clipped in and secure. Now we can mount this back to the box. So uh, one of the things I decided to get was this 500 watt Amazon Basics heater. The only color they had was uh, pink, but that's not really gonna matter because my intention is to take this thing apart and only use, you know, the heater core because all the temperature control um, is going to be done external and uh, I don't need this chunky plastic housing. So one of the things I forgot to mention, the final results of modifying this heater core now, why did I do this? One, to remove extraneous components, like the casing, the switch, and you know, just the bulk. Uh, but 
Number two, the main reason for doing this is when this bed comes all the way down, as it can when you're printing, you know, a 400 millimeter print, this is the only way to get any heater core to fit underneath the bed. And there's nowhere else to put it in the box. You could put it up high, but then, you know, the base of the printer would be very cold, right? So to get it to fit under here, I had to choose a lower wattage model and I had to modify it. Anyways, right now it's stuck to the concrete using double-sided uh, foam sticky adhesive tape and that's worked very well so far. One of the major issues with making a printer enclosure is thermals. The driver board of the printer isn't very sensitive to heat, but the power supply definitely is. In my printer, as with most printers, the two are packaged together. I will be separating them and I will be locating the power supply outside the enclosure in a much colder environment. I won't be covering the rewiring in super specific detail, but I will quickly go over it. Let's get to it. I went and cleaned up that heater a little bit and, uh, you know, adhesive that down to the concrete. I cleaned up all the wires on the printer, mostly. In the back of there, I went and installed all the wires. And our, we have two main sets of cables coming through this black uh, conduit plus the heater wire. And that gets into a bunch of these connections here. Our two switches. This is the temperature sensor here. It's clipped towards the you know, upper part of the chamber. And around back, we have all the wires coming out. So we've got our 120 volts in, we've got some daisy chained neutrals, uh, daisy chained earths. And we've got our um, couple of uh, negatives and then a positive output. And of course, this is our main input, power cord, fuse block, switch. And the power supply is mounted on the back here so that Hopefully the noise stays back here. Now I actually had to change the original mounting position of this hardware in the back here. Our wire chain was in the middle. What was happening is whenever the printer would travel along this edge, the chain would be jammed up against the box and it would, you know, really mess, uh, mess everything up. Um, so with this new placement, um, that's not an issue anymore. The chain, in fact, barely touches the plywood at, at all. Uh, there's only a few things left to do. I have to add the LED strip tape. I have to clean up the printer because since I initially greased it, it's become dirty and it should be re-greased. I have to add the lid and I have to put on the door. Now I have to install my RGBW LED strip. I think my main strategy is going to be going around on a ring around the top so that you won't really be able to see the uh, LEDs directly. Now they come with an adhesive strip. I don't know how well it's going to work in the chamber, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, so that's pretty well it. We'll start in this corner here. I'll deal with the wires. Pretty much wraps around. Adhesive actually sticks pretty well so far. And I just had to cut it here because this was at this point was soldered. So I ran the extra onto the little power supply bit. Probably could have ran more around the back. You know, I don't want too many objects in the way because they might cast funky shadows and such. I think this is a good start. I could always add more later.
I know I didn't show how I made the door, so I figure I'll just quickly talk about it. Now, the, there was really one or two primary goals with this. One, having a huge viewing window, and two, sealing up against this foam seal. Now that presents a challenge because anything transparent uh, doesn't really have structure. So either you need to make the edge frame excessively stiff and strong like steel, so that when you apply a load on it, it doesn't just you know, buckle away, or you need to somehow get structure out of the transparent part. So what I did was I took this wooden frame here because this was easy to make, right? But problem is wood warps and it's not very stiff. And I added the structure to it using a sheet of glass. There's a few good things about glass and that it's very optically transparent, scratch resistant, doesn't fade, etc. But the main deal here is its stiffness. So glass is somewhere in the range of 70 gigapascals or so. Uh, which is about as stiff as soft metals like aluminum. Whereas plastic, if I were to use polycarbonate or something, well, you can bend polycarbonate very easily. I believe it's like 10 gigapascals or less, so really nothing at all. So glass was actually necessary to achieve the structure, and the glass needed to be tightly glued to the wood, the silicone as well. And one of the things I should mention Anytime you cut glass or snap it, the edges, they don't look sharp, they don't feel sharp, but if you slide your hand across them, you'll cut it right open. So before you even touch the glass, make sure you sand the edges a little bit, just to take that edge off. I learned that the hard way, I'll tell you about that next week, but in the meantime, let's get back to the video. Well, the video is starting to get a little bit long, so I've decided I'm going to bring it to a close here. I think we got a good amount done today. We went over the construction of the remainder of the enclosure. All that's left to do now is to talk about the uh, results of the project, i.e. noise reduction and changes in print quality, as well as going over what worked and what didn't work. And that kind of information will be valuable to you guys if you wanted to attempt something like this yourselves. If you'd like to see that content, uh, please join me next video. In the meantime, I'd like to say thank you for watching. If you like the video, please drop a like on it. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.